Hello friends, hope all you are fine and doing well. Welcome to our channel UG Mold Tech. In today video, we will be cracking the code, Plastics Mold Interview Questions. In this insightful interview, we delve into the world of plastics mold industry and share valuable tips on how to succeed in your next interview. Whether you are a seasoned professional or an aspiring candidate, this video is packed with must-know information to help you build confidence and land that dream job. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell, so you never miss an update on the latest industry insights, tips, and tutorials. We are committed to helping you achieve your goals. Let's start with the number one, in mold interview questions and answer. What are the key considerations when designing a mold for plastics? When designing a mold for plastics, there are several key considerations to keep in mind. Here are some important factors. Part design. Ensure that the part design is suitable for molding, with proper draft angles, wall thickness, and appropriate features for easy ejection. Material selection. Choose the right plastic material based on the desired properties, such as strength, flexibility, heat resistance, and cost. Mold material. Select a mold material that can withstand the molding process and provide good durability, such as steel or aluminum. Cooling system. Design an efficient cooling system to control the temperature during the molding process, ensuring proper solidification and minimizing cycle time. Gate design. Determine the appropriate gate location and type, e.g., edge gate, pin gate, or hot runner system, to ensure proper material flow and minimize gate marks. Ejection system. Design an effective ejection system to safely remove the molded part from the mold, considering factors like ejector pins, slides, or lifters. Friends next point in mold design in NX is 2. How do you ensure proper cooling in a mold design? Proper cooling is achieved by strategically placing cooling channels within the mold to extract heat efficiently and minimize cycle times. Ensuring proper cooling in a mold design is crucial for achieving high quality plastic parts and optimizing cycle time. Some key considerations. 1. Cooling channel design. Design an efficient cooling channel layout that allows for uniform cooling across the mold cavity. Consider factors such as channel diameter, spacing, and placement to maximize heat transfer. 2. Conformal cooling. Utilize conformal cooling channels that follow the contours of the mold cavity for enhanced heat transfer. This can be achieved through advanced manufacturing techniques like additive manufacturing. 3. Balanced cooling. Ensure balanced cooling by distributing cooling channels evenly throughout the mold, especially in areas prone to high heat or thick sections. This helps prevent warping, sink marks, and uneven cooling. 4. Baffles and inserts. Incorporate baffles or inserts in the mold design to direct coolant flow and improve heat dissipation. These features can help control temperature variations and reduce cycle time. Friends next point in plastics mold interview questions is 3. What are the common types of mold gating systems? Common types include sprue gating, edge gating, hot runner systems, subgate. 1. Edge gate. This is most common gating system. The gate is located at the edge of the part, where the molten plastic enters the mold cavity. It leaves a visible gate mark that may require post-processing. 2. Submarine gate. Also known as a submarine or tunnel gate, this gating system is located beneath the part's surface. It provides a gate mark that is hidden or less visible, making it suitable for aesthetic parts. 3. Pin gate. A pin gate is a small diameter gate created by a pin that pushes into the mold cavity. It leaves a small gate mark and is often used for small or delicate parts. 4. Hot runner system. In a hot runner system, molten plastic is injected into the mold cavity through a network of heated channels, eliminating the need for a physical gate. 5. Fan gate. A fan gate is a wide gate that distributes the molten plastic across the mold cavity. It helps prevent flow marks and is commonly used for large, flat parts. 6. Tab gate. A tab gate is a small, rectangular gate that provides a controlled flow of plastic into the mold cavity. It is often used for parts with thin sections or where gate wastage needs to be minimized. Friends next point in mold design interview questions and answers is 4. How do you determine the appropriate injection pressure for a mold? Injection pressure is determined by factors such as material viscosity, part geometry, and mold design. It is typically optimized through mold flow analysis. 
Determining the appropriate injection pressure for a mold involves considering various factors to achieve optimal part quality and mold filling. Here's a general approach. 1. Material specifications. Refer to the material data sheet or manufacturer's guidelines for recommended injection pressure ranges. Different materials have different flow characteristics and viscosity, which influence the required injection pressure. 2. Part design and complexity. Evaluate the part design, including wall thickness, geometry, and any intricate features. Complex parts or those with thin walls may require higher injection pressures to ensure proper filling and avoid defects like short shorts or flow hesitation. 3. Mold design and runner system. Assess the mold design, including the runner system. Factors such as runner size, length, and diameter impact the pressure drop during injection. A well-designed runner system minimizes pressure loss and allows for efficient filling. Friends, next point in interview question for injection molding is 5. How do you address undercuts in a mold design? Undercuts can be addressed through the use of side actions, collapsible cores, or lifters in the mold design. Addressing undercuts in a mold design requires careful consideration and the implementation of specific techniques. Here's a general approach. 1. Identify the undercuts. Determine the areas in the part design where undercuts are present. Undercuts are features that prevent the part from being easily ejected from the mold. 2. Draft angles. Incorporate draft angles into the part design. Draft angles are tapered surfaces that allow for easy release of the part from the mold. They help to avoid interference between the part and the mold during ejection. 3. Side actions or slides. Utilize side actions or slides in the mold design. These are additional mold components that move or slide to create the necessary clearance for undercuts during ejection. They allow the mold to release the part without damaging it. 4. Lifters or cams. Consider using lifters or cams in the mold design. These components can be used to physically lift or rotate the part to release it from the mold. They are particularly useful for complex undercuts. 5. Core pulling. Implement core pulling mechanisms if needed. Core pulling involves moving a portion of the mold, core, to create the necessary clearance for undercuts. This technique is commonly used for complex or deep undercuts. Friends, next point in mold interview questions is 6. What is the purpose of venting in a mold design? Venting allows the escape of air or gases during the injection molding process, preventing defects like air traps or burn marks on the part surface. Venting in mold design serves the important purpose of allowing the escape of air, gases, and excess resin during the injection molding process. When designing a mold, incorporating appropriate venting channels or slots in areas prone to air entrapment or gas release is crucial. The size, location, and number of vents depend on factors such as part geometry, resin characteristics, and mold complexity. Proper venting enhances the overall molding process, leading to higher quality parts with fewer defects. Friends, next point in injection molding questions is 7. How do you address issues like sink marks or warpage in a molded part? Sink marks can be minimized by adjusting cooling rates or modifying part geometry. Warpage can be addressed through proper gate placement and cooling system design. Addressing issues like sink marks or warpage in a molded part requires careful consideration during the mold design and molding process. Here are some approaches to mitigate these issues. 1. Gate placement. Proper gate placement is crucial to control the flow of molten resin into the mold cavity. By strategically positioning the gate, you can ensure balanced filling and minimize the risk of sink marks or warpage. Gate placement should aim for symmetrical flow patterns and avoid high stress areas. 2. Cooling system design. An efficient cooling system is essential to control the cooling rate of the molded part. Non-uniform cooling can lead to differential shrinkage, causing warpage. 3. Material selection. The choice of material can significantly impact the occurrence of sink marks or warpage. Some materials are more prone to these issues than others. 4. Process optimization. Fine-tuning the molding process parameters, such as injection speed, pressure, and temperature, can help minimize sink marks or warpage. Friends, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We have a lot more informative content coming your way. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.